Hello and welcome to the five minutes to pass your exam for strategic business reporting. The expectation at this stage is synthesis and evaluation. These requirements are the way you need to communicate and apply your knowledge in the exam. There are a list of verbs that you need to ensure you apply the appropriate response to in your exam. When presented with an exam question, you should have an easy process on how to convert this into an answer that will get you 50% of the marks. My suggestion would be 1. Read the question carefully. Take your time in thinking about an approach and solution. If you start writing too quickly, you will miss key points and marks. And remember, answer the question asked. 2. Assume knowledge is important from the financial reporting and other related modules. Look on SBR as a continuation of financial reporting and not a new subject. 3. Make sure you are applying a solution to the scenario. A good way of doing this is making sure that each recommendation or suggestion you make can be tied into an issue identified or highlighted in the case study. If not, it is not relevant to the solution. And four, learn the framework for different types of responses. But more on this later. It is important to know what you are facing when going into your exam. SBR is a 3 hour 15 minute exam with all compulsory questions. Planning is vital, so allocate the first 15 minutes to this without starting to write an exam answer. In section A, question 1 is 30 marks. A full set of group financial statements, including cash flows, is not required. A numerical solution on its own will not pass this examination. Question 2 is worth 20 marks and generally covers ethics and accounting issues. This requires a deeper understanding of ethical situations, hence you get the two professional marks. Section B is 2 by 25 mark questions and contains a question from the stakeholder's perspective, requirements dealing with current issues, the application of IFRS to different corporate scenarios, sustainability and integrated reporting, and additional information is available from the ACCA technical articles, and group accounting principles. From a time management perspective, I would recommend splitting the requirements into smaller sections for planning. Recommendations for the best way to study for your SPR exam are pretty obvious, but require them being followed. It requires regular work and you need to learn both the techniques and communicate the information learned during your study to address scenarios provided in an exam. Techniques need to be practiced and build that practice into exam questions. Frameworks need to be learned and written responses practiced and repetition of practice is key. Now we'll go into those areas of focus in a detailed way. Firstly, consolidation. This will cover complex groups, disposal with loss of control, disposals with control retained, step acquisitions, acquisitions that increase controlling interest, but not a full consolidation question. It may be useful to practice a full consolidation question to see how everything fits together ahead of your study. IFRS 9 covering classification, impairment and hedging. Also IAS 32 that covers preference shares and compound instruments. When considering revenue, IFRS 15 and the five-step five step framework is key. When we look at leases, pensions and deferred tax, it requires a mix of definition, calculation and impact. When looking at share-based payments, you must be able to consider equity-based, cash-based and a scenario that considers both or offers choice. Cash flow statements look at the structure and appreciate the elements of a transaction that is cash related. Finally, details on current issues can be found on the IASB website and in the ACCA technical articles on the ACCA website. Now we look at planning your answer. There is an example of Cutchin provided here. If it is not a question you are familiar with, pause the video now and read the requirements. It is also available on our SBR page. You can see on this slide a simple breakdown of the eight marks on offer and how relatively easy it is to get them all. On equity, a debt, a straightforward definition of equity and debt, and a consideration of the loan and equity gives you the first four marks. The second part considers the proposed accounting treatment regarding the substance of the transaction and the key areas to address to maximize your marks. Learnings from previous exams include a positive trend that the SBR pass rate is increasing. Regurgitation of IFRS leads to a poor exam technique. As an example, listing the five steps in IFRS 15 will only get you one mark. The conceptual framework is a basis to answer many questions. And the examiner uses real-life scenarios and will likely include areas around the digitalization of accounting. Finally, what does accounting look like in a digital company? Using Facebook as an example, we see a trend that traditional ratios are less relevant and that the valuation of companies are more linked to intangible assets. IFRS does not address this valuation and investors look at advanced performance measurements and non-GAAP reports as a guide. 
Investors are more likely to ignore losses and look towards the business model, but cash flow management discussion and analysis sections of the financial statements are key. So there is SBR in five minutes. Apply this advice throughout your study and use for each question during exam bootcamp and you will give yourself a great chance of passing. With a pass rate of 49%, it appears that you are given a good chance of passing. Don't take that for granted and guarantee that you pass the exam with flying colours. Best of luck.